Goku and Vegeta, a rivalry that is honestly more iconic than pretty much just about everything I've seen in fiction. Only being surpassed by crazy things like God versus the Devil or something. Throughout the entire series, they constantly compare each other, and Vegeta is always finding ways to surpass Goku or reach him, and the two are on their journey to become the greatest masters in the entire universe. Well, until Dragon Ball Super and Beerus. They grow so powerful that even gods fear them, hate them, and can't even comprehend their combat ability most of the time. And during the Fusion Saga, Toriyama had very little idea how to take them to the next level without some absurd or seemingly unearned transformation. And that's when the idea was brought up to have them just fuse together into an ultimate super warrior known as Vegito. Vegito, ever since his debut, or even in video games such as Budokai 2, 3, and onward, has always felt like a next-level fighter, whether it be in terms of his demeanor, his strategy, his power, his style, everything was just different. In Super, we see Vegito reappear against the fused god Zamasu as Vegito Blue, but in this video, I wanted to go over something a bit different. Just how strong would Vegito be if he appeared now? as true Ultra Instinct Vegito. Surely, he'd slap up Beerus in terms of power, as even Blue Vegito apparently could rival him in the manga, and easily the anime as well. But how would Vegito fare against Whis, or higher-than-god-level fighters? How would he handle Black Frieza or Gohan Beast, and why am I hyping up his character so much? Let's get into it. First things first, Vegito is strong. Really f strong. Like, I don't think people really understand how strong he is. In Super Exciting Guide, Vegito is stated to be the power level of Goku multiplied by the power level of Vegeta. Remember, power level. A times B. Using power levels, it gets very absurd. In Daizenshu, Vegito in base is stated to be stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, which is true, but most people usually have, say, Super Saiyan 3 as only a 400 times multiplier to maybe a couple thousand if you use some Super Saiyan 2 multipliers differently, but blah 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 blah. With Super Exciting Guide, even on Namek, Vegito would reach a power level of 3 million times stronger than Goku. This is due to the fact that in Dai Zenshu 7, Goku on Namek, just in base, had a power level of 3 million. And this is on Namek, over 7,500 times stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku in base. But this is the Majin Buu Saga, and eventually Goku Black arc, and even eventually post Granola arc. In the Buu Saga, at least using the anime, which we will be using the anime and manga for this, Goku in base during the Otherworld tournament was able to even surprise and make Frieza shocked at his strength, but then in base he eventually surpasses the South Galaxy's ace fighter Pycon after growing stronger in the tournament who in the Extreme Battle Collection 2 guide was stated to be able to one-shot Cell who was stronger than ever. Even if you downplay Cell to being some hypothetical Super Saiyan 2 level power-up from Goku from Namek, ignoring every increase all the fighters ever had, and say Cell would be a 300 million power level, which is absurd downplay, trust me, and use this as Goku and Vegeta in the Buu Saga, Super Saiyan 3 Goku would hit a 120 billion. Vegeta would be at 90 quadrillion. You might be saying Cell. 90 quadrillion, what the f are you talking about? Yeah, this is once again absurd low balls, and I would actually argue the difference between Goku and Vegito would be even greater. In the anime, they make this absurd difference even actually more consistent. So you thought I was crazy, the anime makes it crazier. Remember how fighters who rivaled Super Saiyan 3 Goku, say like Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and Super Buu, would use all their power to open up, say, a small man-sized portal? Well, Buuhan and Vegito are doing that on a scale as big as the entire universe. Imagine the difference between a person and an entire planet, let alone the entire universe. And you start to see that Vegito's strength is probably not an exaggeration with the power level difference, but Vegito is more than a higher power level. This person, Vegito, might unironically be better than Goku and Vegeta in just literally every single way. And I'm not just saying that in the sense that it's them just put together. I mean that Vegito actually has unique traits that might not only make him a super fighter, but even a super genius as well. I think the first thing that's unique about Vegito people don't realize is that this dude is actually massive. Yeah, remember how Super Buu towered over Gohan in that one scene, or how Buu Tanks kneeling by a kneeling Gohan made him look like a literal adult next to a child? Buu-on is just as big as Buu Tanks and makes Goku and Vegeta look like midgets, and here's Vegito, just relative in size. That means Vegito would probably unironically 
tower over Gohan like this Super Buu, and I'm not joking. This is mainly only in the original series, however, in Super it's definitely a bit different with Vegito fighting a larger fusion Zamasu than Goku did, so it's sort of hard to tell. And in the manga, he doesn't seem bigger at all. So either it was a forgotten detail or really just some Buu Saga anime only bullshit that they just dropped for no reason. That's the first difference, notably. The next is, of course, Vegito's intelligence, which I talked about earlier. Vegito's intelligence and combat ability are also multiplied and magnified, to the point he is a perfect fighter, greater than just Goku and Vegeta put together. Remember when Whis was commenting on the weaknesses of Goku and Vegeta during Resurrection F? Whis would have absolutely zero comment about Vegito, said maybe he's not using Ultra Instinct, which he would probably master almost immediately upon learning it from Whis or hearing it from Whis. When Vegito first appears, he also talks about Goku and Vegeta like they are not him at all, and his personality consistently belittles his opponents and attacks them psychologically. Considering Vegito is the perfect fighter, this means he actually psychologically attacks his opponents more than likely on purpose outside of just ego, because empty ego or boasting is a weakness, not a perfect fighting ability, which I'll get into later. But during Boo, he calls him out for being nervous the second he appears and picks up on many cues from him to pick on him for, even before he's seriously trying to prove he's actually better than him. As Super Vegito, he actually bullies Buhan's abilities as a fighter and even teaches him things mid-fight. He even teaches Buhan how to compose himself and use his battle power better, very discreetly, which is actually a detail many people miss at least in the anime. The anime is a lot better than the manga when it comes to Vegito. Vegito just kind of comes and goes in the manga. Yeah, Vegito actually trains Buhan while they are fighting just to beat him up and prove he's better even harder. After Buhan rampages and almost destroys all of reality by screaming when Vegito makes him mad, Vegito tries to get Buhan to hone and concentrate that power into his normal attacks, which Buhan eventually does. And this is all just so Vegito can prove he's superior once again, even more, and further whittle down the confidence of Super Buu. He picks on Boo for forgetting how to sense Vegito's movements without his eyes when he is flustered, and basically even bullies Piccolo and Boo for thinking Gotenks' techniques, even with Piccolo and Gohan's ingenuity amping it, would be effective, and calls Buhan pretty much a child-level fighter, while easily dismantling all his techniques. Doing this to Super Buhan is more impressive than you'd think, as Piccolo is a highly experienced fighter, arguably almost as good as Goku, with something he Piccolo is even better fighter than Goku sometimes, but it's debatable. Not only that, but he has the book smarts and potential for combat that Gohan has, yet Vegito makes him look absolutely stupid. Even power levels aside, the way he handles Majin Buu's attacks are basically using techniques or his strategies. Even when he purposely walks closer to Buu expecting to turn into a candy ball, which actually Enma calls out as a Vegeta strategy, he actually blasts through Buu's mouth and rips his tentacle off very particularly, which most people miss. Most people think he was just trying to beat up Buhan here so Buhan would turn him back to normal and then continue with his absorption plan, but that is actually not necessarily true. He rips a Buhan's tentacle off while a candy ball to set up Boo in the future and to manipulate Boo to try and then absorb him later. Even most people watching didn't know that, but in the anime it is more apparent. After fooling Piccolo, Gohan, Boo, and even everyone in the afterlife at the same time by acting like he's the biggest braggart of all time, hell, even most Spurgs online today think Vegito is just a troll character, Vegito beats up Boo and even purposely stretches Boo out and holds him face down over the location of his tentacle so that Boo has a higher chance of noticing. This was an insane detail I didn't notice until I actually rewatched this, but eventually he leads Boo to a spot and beats him up so he'll specifically have the tentacle behind him, but just in the right position so Boo will see it and then try absorbing him later, which was Vegito's plan ever since he was just a candy ball. This is even crazier when you consider that even Super Boo himself was able to hatch a strategy capable of tricking Gohan, Gotenks, and Piccolo as well before absorbing anybody. By the way, that candy ball sh**, did you know Vegito has a special ability that Goku and Vegeta also don't have, which is the ability to retain all his powers no matter what shape his body is? He sort of gets these weird gag-like plot armor powers and could literally be turned into a banana and probably could still solo Naruto, joking. Anyway, this plan of Vegito's impresses even old Kai so much that he actually calls Vegito a big deal due to his smarts, and even calls him smart in many translations, something he never calls anybody else ever. So you might be saying, okay, Seth, I can see how Vegito maybe uses psychology there to get absorbed, but how does it apply to his many other fights like with Zamasu? He doesn't need to pick on Zamasu to get absorbed or anything, so why is he picking on him? Yeah, how does this make him different than Goku or even Vegeta just trash-talking people? How is it a sign of his fighting prowess? 
I think a good example is to look at someone else most would agree is a highly intelligent super fighter, Beerus. Look at the way Beerus gaslights and manipulates literally everyone in the universe into thinking he's out for blood against Earth, to the point he pushes Goku to power up numerous times beyond Super Saiyan God, a form he had just obtained, and for Vegeta and the others to push themselves and start croaking over in fear, just for him to act like he fell asleep and leave after lying to them that he was exhausted from trying his best. This is pretty much what Vegito did to Super Buu in the Buu Saga, and another moment of this is how Vegeta acts to manipulate Kabe into obtaining Super Saiyan with his words alone, while nowhere near what Vegito and Beerus did, you can see how it's very veteran and specific banter. Compare how Vegito and Beerus were mentally dancing around all the characters in the story, or even Master Roshi in original Dragon Ball for that matter, and compare it to Goku trying to manipulate Oob at the end of Z. Imagine if Beerus or Vegito were trying to manipulate Oob and using his hidden powers or grow stronger. They would probably do an insanely better job. But what if I told you that this manipulative banter can actually be used to weaken your opponent? In an interview with Akira Toriyama, he was asked in the truth about the Dragon Ball manga, Toriyama thought of it like this special interview in Super Exciting Guide Story Volumes about what is the key to winning a battle, in where he replies, In battle, the most important thing is the size of your key and your control over it. Key is a concept, of course, includes such spiritual powers such as energy, courage and right-mindedness. No matter how much you train, there are limits to physical strength and the only way to overcome that is through Ki. I think Gogo was able to approach the mightiest warriors in the universe through strengthening his Ki. And this also is a little bit of a callback to Goku's mindset and his training also helping him be stronger than Vegeta throughout the whole story, which I went over in my last video, which you should check out by the way if you haven't. This is a philosophy seen in many Chinese martial arts specifically, but basically these components create the concept of Ki in Dragon Ball. If things such as courage and right-mindedness can amplify your key or create it, then surely shaking those things would manipulate your key and your ability to make it as well. This is best shown a few times, but mainly in Gohan's fights, the first one being Super Saiyan 2 Gohan vs. Cell, where because Gohan doubted himself, was worried about Earth, and was focusing on his injuries instead of what he could do now, he wasn't able to unleash his full power. Thus, with Goku's help and reassurance, Gohan is able to reobtain his right-mindedness and courage, and therefore regain his full strength and overpower so. In Gohan vs. Tanks, you can see Tanks further manipulating Gohan and trying to reduce his resolve as they fight, eventually throwing Piccolo quotes and even giving Gohan coaching to further show the gap between them, until Gohan is literally just so stunlocked by Tanks' words and actions he can't move, and Tanks just combos him for free. Likewise, if Vegito is truly the perfect fighter, he would understand the concept or subconsciously use it to his advantage, and he does this against Boo, but not as extremely as he wants Boo to power up and desire to absorb him after realizing the futility of fighting him, blah blah blah, but in the Zamasu battle, he's actively trying to shake Zamasu's right-mindedness, and in the anime, Zamasu is already having a spiritual split in character confliction through his two halves, and Vegito specifically keeps nailing him for that and mocking him for it very intentionally. He even mocks him for his immortality worsening due to his lack of resolve and fusing with someone he should hate to further break his spirit. This eventually causes Zamasu to try and become massive while his body and ki actually fall apart alongside his mental to the point he actually eventually becomes insane, and Vegito continues to whittle away at both his spirit and body. Vegito likes to trash talk his opponents too, but he does it in very different ways. While Vegito and Zamasu are arguably relative, Vegito usually trash talks when he is pretty much superior or just blatantly heavily winning, and when it's not as needed. And even then, most of his rants are about his own character or pride, but he does do this sometimes, just not at the same level or near the same level of success as Vegito, which would make sense as Vegito should logically just be smarter and a better fighter than Vegeta anyway. Vegeta is never stated to be the perfect fighter either, so it's not really that big of a deal if he doesn't. In the manga, Vegito Blue is shown for like three seconds, but the brief moment he actually does talk to Zamasu, he opens up the dialogue with Zamasu by immediately stunlocking him with lore bombs over and over again that Zamasu never expected, and this would be to shake Zamasu's right mind and encourage and serves no other purpose, and he does this right off the bat. He even tries to mock him for how his plan will now fail to further shake his spirit and nerf him instinctually. 
right off the bat. The second Vegito appears, he's just completely next level, even psychologically in the manga. Fun fact about that Beerus and Vegito personality comparison is that Vegito Blue is actually stated to be equal to Beerus in power as well during this time, which I thought was strangely fitting. Base Vegito also now is a multiplier so gargantuan by this point that even in base form, Zamasu thinks Vegito is actually a further power-up transformation, and Vegito can blow him in half even without blue. I've also seen people try to downplay Vegito by saying he toys around too much. However, he only did this versus Boo for said particular reasons. And versus Zamasu, he basically immediately went for the kill in the manga and only defused due to not expecting the time limit to change and Patara not being able to handle his power because it was just so insane. Whereas in the anime, the fight versus Zamasu only lasted so long because Vegito was whittling down his key. And as I said before, even Gogeta is very different than Goku and Vegeta in this regard as well. Whereas Goku and Vegeta would have probably never killed Broly. Vegeta wanting to train and rise up the Saiyans, even Universe 6 enemies me Saiyans he shouldn't have any link to, and Goku knowing Broly isn't bad, Gogeta just instantly goes for the kill shot with very little regard at the end of their battle. And Vegito is different than Gogeta and has higher IQ feats, but if Vegito was similar in this regard and due to being the perfect fighter and was just super combat optimized to the point he went for victory whenever he could, I wouldn't be shocked at all. But now Goku and Vegeta themselves have Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego, as well as new abilities such as Spirit Fission and Susano. Yeah, I don't know. So if Vegito fought Boo or Zamasu nowadays, you could probably just punch them apart, which is kind of a cool detail. But this also has scaling connotation, so let's get into that. The only way to compare Vegito to someone stronger than Beerus is using the God Scale. As Vegito is the only character to come up other than gods that actually surpasses Beerus pretty objectively, at least in the manga. The god scale was Toriyama's old comparison of God Goku, Beerus, and Whis's power, where he said Goku is a 6, Beerus was a 10, and Whis is a 15. While this is horribly untrue and inaccurate now, you can sort of see the initial idea was for the difference between Whis and Beerus to be slightly greater than the difference between Goku and Beerus, and if it took a Super Saiyan Blue Vegito fusion in the Goku Black Arc for Goku to reach Beerus' level, what would it take to reach Whis' level? Well, Seth, if Gogeta Blue was struggling with a guy maybe stronger than Beerus, how would Vegito ever compete with Whis? And I hate this for so many reasons. And you know what? This is a Vegito video, so let me just drop a nuclear bomb real quick on why Vegito would slam Gogeta. Vegito and Patara are stated numerous times in every guide in existence to be stronger than Fusion. From everything to the Toriyama approved and super updated Dai Zenshu and Cho Zenshu, to the DB fact files for the anime and even the Dragon Books, Patara is always stronger than the Fusion Dance. Even Vegito's own dialogue in the anime supports this, so why do people say Gogeta is still Vegito's level? It's due to some stupid misconceptions. The first one being that there is a guide that says Gogeta would beat Vegito if his time limit didn't run out. This guide is referring to Fusion Reborn Born Gogeta versus Boo Saga Vegito, not Boo Saga Gogeta versus Boo Saga Vegito. So this is more of a comment on Fusion Reborn Goku and Vegeta being stronger than Boo Saga Goku and Vegeta, as movie characters are from a different dimension and have different powers entirely. <coughs> Broly is the strongest character in the whole Dragon Ball anime, and he takes place in the Cell games of the movies. <coughs> Some have gone so far as to say that Fusion would simply work better on fatigued fighters than Patara, but at the end of the day, it isn't just some equivalent or same Gogeta and Vegito being compared. Boo Saga Vegito can still slam Boo Saga Gogeta and would not contradict this guide at all. The next one is some Dragon Ball Super Broly movie promotional material trying to hype up Gogeta as an equal trump card to Vegito. Literally everyone in the Dragon Ball fandom bullied this quote as it can literally just mean that both Vegito and Gogeta are far beyond anything Goku and Vegeta can just throw out individually and fusion is always the highest thing they can do in a fight. Even Herms, the translator, and many others just agrees with this. It was also a statement made to make the movie seem cooler as people always saw Gogeta as just bad Vegito. <coughs> he is. And it made the Gogeta versus Broly fight seem less impressive, so they tried using some gaslighting rhetoric to make people think Gogeta was up there. He's not. He sucks. Vegito slaps him. But this would also apply to Black Frieza, by the way. If Black Frieza were to train for Gogeta and all the Saiyans he knows of, it doesn't mean he knows a thing about Vegito. Now, to get into Vegito versus Whis, you can calculate it this way. If Goku and Vegeta fusing with Blue makes them Beerus level and gives them a 4 on this hypothetical god scale, then it may be possible to reach Whis level or beyond with a true instinct fusion. This is mainly due to the fact that Blue Vegeta thought he was stronger than Broly in the Granola arc, who required a Blue fusion to face to begin with, 
and even questioned if he could take out MUI Goku before seeing his full powers. Using the anime, MUI Goku is stronger than Beerus, with Jiren and MUI Goku arguably being able to possibly take down Broly, although it's debatable. And considering Vegito would be getting this Patara amp on top of a form already stronger than a 10 on the God scale, it would then be possible for him to really hit a 14 or 15 pretty logically considering he actually has a form beyond MUI now in true Ultra Instinct and as well as Vegeta's possible ego and Hawkeye powers, which would maybe amp all his abilities on top of that. I'd say true Ultra Instinct Vegeta would probably be around Whis's level, using that consistent god scale if you're very generous to MUI Goku and Ego Vegito. But at least in the anime, they more than likely definitely would box up Whis. Of course, they would never kill him or anything, as angels have like weird resistance to being killed or removed from existence or something, but you get the idea. In terms of Beast Gohan, Beast Gohan is basically only if he is fighting a character that's called Cell Max, who, while he did somewhat struggle with Orange Piccolo, who is true Ultra Instinct Goku level, he doesn't really show anything beyond that too much. And all we know about Cell Max is that if he's completed, he could basically just take out Broly. However, one thing I do want to say about Vegito is that if Orange Piccolo is fighting this Cell Max, and while Cell Max could get bloodlusted and possibly one-shot Piccolo if he really wanted to, uh, just like you know, Kefla would be able to do the Omen Goku, if not on steroids. The difference between Vegito and Goku is still that 300 million to 90 quadrillion, you know? I don't know. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I do think that True Instinct Vegito would just be an absolute monster. I do think logically he'd probably be Whis level at this point. Maybe, maybe a little bit weaker or maybe even a little bit stronger if you think that he'd actually just get that giga amped. I would not be surprised remotely if like he was stated to be Whis's level or as strong as an angel or something like that. Especially if in the Goku Black arc he was already God level and beyond. Really wouldn't be surprised. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.